Okay, since you're going to be helping go through pictures, or recording now, by the way, you're going to be helping to go through pictures, and there's quite a few of them, and maybe you should understand my, I guess, class on the language of aesthetics, language of photography and teaching photography. Um, I'll probably go through it somewhat quicker, but feel free to ask questions. I, I know my computer isn't fast. Going through and helping you learn the rating system would require my computer to be fast. So I'll record that separately okay. um, so that you can learn how to be, you know, because essentially even in just this trip, there's 15,000 pictures. So going through them, you know, even if you went through them fast, 15,000 pictures, if it took one second, it's still like four hours just to go through them one time. Right. But that's if you were able to go through it one second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and I go through them that, that fast, but then I have to go, you know, the concept is I go through them a few times and we'll learn how to be fast and efficient, efficient, you know, high quality um, with speed kind of combination. I certainly don't sort through my pictures as fast as some people, but I'm certainly not as slow as most. But it's also a good quality result. Um, and the ratings help to look back through them um, for years to come. And what, you know, all kind of comes down to understanding what makes a picture good. And I think some most people think, oh, that's a very subjective thing. Actually, I shouldn't be defaulted to this picture because. I put it on YouTube. That's not the best one to be because I didn't take that picture. She gave permission to the person that took it. Okay. Picture of the women too much. So, or maybe they're fine with it. I'm not sure. But anyways, to anyone watching on YouTube, that's the story. If we do put it on YouTube. Anyways. Um, so some people think that, like, you know, it's totally, like, subjective. You, like, does it, like, like, everyone thinks something different. But in general, we're talking about generalities. There is a general perception of pictures. Like, in general, you can understand what people think is a good picture or not. Right. Some people have different variances on it. Like, they like it more than one person or the other. But in general, and my type of photography is a general type of, like, that's generally most people like my pictures. Right. And then you go, once you understand kind of the default, then you can look at the exceptions to the rules, right? And you can look at artsy sort of exceptions. And But in general, I'll go through um, some of these things that I've taught lots of photographers. And they become very good at it and it clicks quite quickly for them. I, I have taught people that were in photography for years and years and years and years. And then when I talk to them, they're like, it clicked. Like after all these years, like it just made sense and like everything progressed at a much faster rate. And the way I put it is some people like, you know, you give a person a fish or you teach them how to fish and more of the type of person that teaches them the base foundations gives them the, the knowledge so that they can learn, they can teach themselves how to fish. And that's best. <clears throat> that's like the third stage. So, and, and that is kind of like the language of photography. People, um, people grasp and understand the world based on basically the language in their mind, the way that their mind processes things and their mind processes things usually in language. That's why different cultures think so differently than, than one from another, right? And they act so differently, sometimes even just because their language is so different. And that's why they process and approach things so differently. Well, there's a language of photography, of aesthetics in general. And it's it comes down, you know, there's a couple of mantras that I use. Um, Focus on what's important and make what's important in focus. So 
every picture has a story to tell and we have to look at it like what's important, right? So focusing on what's important means even to the, as a photographer, like in the, <coughs> as I'm taking the picture, I want to do a do decent job at it, right? Okay. But part of it is I can come back later and edit the picture. Obviously, it goes without, like, my like, sure. screen is not doing well. Like, it's take, that should have taken one second. It took, like, almost a minute, right? So excuse this, but we're, we're only going to do this a few times as we just mostly just talk. Okay. But if you remember that picture, which is still not loading, which is crazy, because <laughs> of the Google Meet and the screen recording and <laughs> all that crap, that's just ridiculous. Correct. <laughs> but there was a guy on the left-hand side. Now, okay. is he part of the story or not? Like, if he's not part of the story and he is kind of up front in the picture, bright in the picture, in focus, then he gets more attention because that's one of the things what actually gives attention to a picture. It's whatever's bright and whatever is in focus gets the bulk of attention. Attention mm, okay. means time and thought sure. time and thought holy balls this is so crazy that it's <laughs> it's so delayed <laughs> this usually takes like one second this is like we're going on like three minutes now the poor little computer can't even do this holy crap okay well I'll give up on that experiment so anyways if you imagine i was going to do it like in real time Right. Oh, well, now it did it fast. Nope. Dang it. What's going on here? Okay, so if you imagine, so that person's in focus. Now, there's lots of other people in the picture. Why aren't they distracting from the kid? Because they're out of focus. Right. So things that are blurry, we just, our mind does not spend time and attention on them. Okay. Sure. But things that are in focus, we spend time on them. Right. And attention it gets directed there. So okay. if you have attention directed to things that aren't part of the story, that is the definition of a distraction. Time spent, attention spent, where you do not want them to spend it. You don't want them to spend it on anything that's not part of the story. Okay. So simply cropping out makes this picture better. And that is a easy thing. Right. So when you look at this as a raider, you say, oh, well, that's not good because of this and this. But as a raider, when you're looking at a picture, you look at it kind of like God looks at us, like at our potential okay. um, and you know it can spend eternities on us and Jarvie can spend like 30 seconds on a picture <laughs> so you have to think about that I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this picture but cropping out something when I'm not screen grabbing and using a Google Meets is very fast so right. let's go back and try it again why is it still trying to load just blows my mind. Easy. I just can't do it. That's weird. I was going to crop out and just to show that difference. It's just so strange. Um, it's still bothering me that that's happening. Anyways, but you've got sticks and all this stuff, but they're not as much of a distraction because they're a little bit blurrier. Right? Okay. Now, <clears throat> the way that cameras work is what's called depth of field. And you have a range based on the f stop and some other things of an acceptable, like an in focusness. Like there's a part that is perfectly in focus and then it ranges forwards and backwards, growing more and more out of focus. Right? Okay. Yes. So it's a plane, it's like a circle more or less around your lens. Okay. Anyways, so I shoot very low depth of field 
so that things get blurry quickly. So sometimes even from the eye to the ear, it's already out of focus. But it's not just the aperture thing, the F thing. It's also distance away from subject. It's also the focal length, and it's a bunch of different things. But in general, in practice, when you look at a picture, this is a perfect example. I know that may be hard for you to see it up front, close, but I tend to see that people that do the best job at finding focus or out of focus are those with bigger screens. Funny enough. <laughs> um, so if you have a bigger screen or something to that effect, you're able to find this. And um, so if you can see, his eyes are out of focus because I focused okay. here. The camera focused on these eyes. Okay. And, and he was a tad bit closer than her. And, the, and because I am closer to the subject, yeah. way more close than, look at, look at how much closer I am. Right. Of you course. see the comparison? Of course. Yes. So therefore, he's out of focus. But it's never like, because this is, he's out of focus, it's, it's automatically a bad picture. You have to make a ton of judgment calls very, very fast. Right? Yes. Like, because there's a whole other line of things of what makes a picture att att attractive or distractive, right? right? And in this case, there's a few other things. And one of the things that you've talked about in the past is that you have an emotional connection to certain things. Well, right. that is part of aesthetics. Okay. And I'll describe that a little bit later. But, um, well, well, I guess I could journey down that now. But um, I, I wanted to talk about the journey of the eye. We look at things that are in focus and that are bright. Like they've done studies where they flip a, a picture onto the screen and they watch, they judge where the eyes are going and they, you know, could test and they see, like, they know that the things that bring a track, uh, that get someone's first attention are, are focus and brightness. <clears throat> and sometimes it can be the reverse. If everything was super bright on the picture, it can be the dark thing that gets their attention first. Okay, sure. Um, and then also what colors it is, you know, like if you go here, sometimes it's the color, right? It's the red or the green. Right. Um, that sort of thing. But it also can be contextual at times. So there's multiple things, but it, it's generally speaking, the things that have the most impact is brightness and focus. But it could be that thing that's like contextually, the thing that, you know, that seems to be closer in the screen is getting my, a bit of my attention. Sure. Um, so I don't have too many examples of something that, um, I don't know what to say, like, yeah, <clears throat> it's still loading. So everything should be out of focus, but, um, and then we have general things like we generally tend to look at eyes and stuff like that. Okay. And that could be a chicken and egg sort of thing. Like we make the eyes in focus the most. So we tend to look at the eyes the most. And so are we then just trained to look at eyes because of that? Or is it, mm. or is it that we just look at the eyes because that's what we tend to look at, you know, but focus on what's important and make what's important in focus because it's not just a cute saying it's because it, is important for attention and our time spent on a picture that we, we are directing the story. So anyways, back to the, the subject of if there's something that is not part of the story, like that was a really good example of the, of that one guy, um, because there was that thing on the side, right? Right. want to crop in here because these things would just people would start thinking about these things on the side right 
but we are putting her into a story like a context of an area. So we want more of this field, right? Right. That's so it's true. good. So there's many ways of telling this story. Um, and so now having the kid there, it's bright. He's not necessarily in focus, but it's bright. So we're kind of dividing attention. But are we dividing attention? Because maybe the storyline is all of them in a row, in a line, carrying stuff. Right. So that's totally fine. Or it's about her. So. But then you say, well, is it, you know, how much is it about the sky? And if I was had the ability to develop live, which do I? Nope. Still failing on me. I would crop down on the sky because that's not part of the story, right? So right. I focus on what's important. So I okay. cut off a decent amount of the sky, not all of it. It's part it's part of the story, but not that big of a story. Right. Um, I mean, if you were a graphic designs person, you're like, no, I need all that blank space for to do blah right. blah blah, you know, to put some words in there. That's a thumbnail <laughs> or my YouTube thing or whatever. <laughs> So um, now what else I will do is, and luckily I don't do too much. This picture is a good example. But I mean, there may be trash on the ground. And the more in focus the trash is, the more of a distraction it is. The brighter the trash is, the more of a distraction it is. You see what I'm saying? Right. Um, so this isn't very bright and it's somewhat blurry and, um, so it's, it's for any time now, you can make a picture, but also about efficiency. Like, which time do you actually do it? Right. Cause you could just like, ah, it's fine. Blah, blah, quick, 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 you know, like next picture. So just. Um, but just because a picture is like, I would not put this picture on, on a, anywhere that it would be viewed large because then people would see it blurry. Okay. But if it was just going to be a small. Because she wants it. You see what I'm saying? I think so. Well, first of all, um, you, were you referring to this picture here with the boy and the Hope Humanity, or the, I mean, uh, uh, Hope Humanitarian, or were you talking about the two Hope Humanitarians? Because you, the delay, I, I wasn't sure which one you were saying is out of focus. I'm talking about the two talking. people. That's what I thought. The, That's what I thought. Okay. The lady and the, <laughs> and the child. Good. I'm like, well, wait a minute. I moved. So I wanted to confirm it. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Got it. <clears throat> now, let me, I could further tell the story. Like, there's plenty in this picture that is blurry, but what's right. important is in focus. And now, okay. <clears throat> if this is a picture of a regular person, they would be thinking about all of this stuff on the on his face. Yeah. And it would be a distraction from telling the story of like, here's this great person and you know, you know, this pretty person and showing them off and like now they're just focused on the dirtiness of the you know, but like this is the story is part of the dirt. So I won't get rid of any of those things, right? Right, right. But if there's some like some like I'll go through on a picture of a person if there's like, you know, a pimple on their face or whatever, I can get rid of it real quick, mm -hmm. right? Because I want them to focus on that person, not on the imperfection on their face or whatever. Sure. It's not like I'm, you know, it's not about changing. It's like changing a temporary thing, right? Right. Anyways, um, that all has to go the subject like because a good picture 
is uh, taking good pictures is about attractions and distractions, creating attractions and avoiding distractions. And right now, the discussion about the journey of the eye is all about <clears throat> attractions and distractions. It's about understanding what we spend time and attention on and knowing about the journey of the eye and bright and focus and look how bright it is here in the left-hand corner of this goat picture. Yeah. Um, if I could quickly go in and use a brush and darken this or use the, the new AI feature to darken a sky in Lightroom, then it would darken this and making this stand out more by comparison, making the goat okay. stand out more by comparison. So what I'll sure. tend to do is like grab a brush and go dark and dark and dark and dark and, and make a, make a, maybe a, make a darken around this and it brings more attention. And then maybe a brush that brightens and go, you know, like literally that fast, like, and I'm done. So the brush would be like, boop, boop, boop. I wish I could do this live for you to see. Like, literally it's like 10 seconds, you know, like, Darken, right. darken, darken, grab another brush or another mask, bright, 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 and we're good to go. Next picture. Would you describe it as framing your subject? Because in what yeah, I it's have... it's like a vignette or a frame. Yeah, like okay. what is a frame? Like literally, why do frames exist that you put on your wall? It's so that it, it keeps the attention inwards. It puts a darker boundary around okay. an image. It keeps the intention inside. Right. And dodging and burning kind of does that same thing, brightening and darkening an area. And the other thing I'll do is I'll take a brush and I will brush with sharpness or clarity, like this ability to make something sharper. It gives that appearance of having a little bit more in focusness so that it brings more attention to where I want. So I'm, I'm painting attention into the picture. And painting okay. people's like that's what I do when I edit. I don't do a ton with the other stuff. It's mostly just a default. None of these pictures have been touched yet at all. It's just default. So when I actually edit like that, it's so bright, it's like you can't see details in there. So yeah. I'll I'll work with that a little bit. But then it's just like it's not gonna actually be too much if unless I find some distractions. Okay, so another things that are distractions, I, I sometimes start with going through att attractions. But distractions are things that are bright or that are in focus that, um, that aren't part of the story. Okay, that's number one. And number two, things that aren't as they should. Okay? Okay. So an uneven horizon. So it's an, it's a horizon that isn't normal. Okay. It will get more attention, but is right. that your story? If it's not, then you're bringing attention to something you shouldn't. Okay. Someone looks at it and like something's off. Something's different. That horizon looks off. They're thinking about something that's not part of your story. Right. You get it? Yep. Time and attention spent where it's not supposed to be. <clears throat> so that's a distraction. Now, if you cut off something and they think about the thing, then okay. these are obviously. I didn't pictures. hear the last part. It, it, it cut you out. If someone is spending time thinking about something that's not in your picture, right. then that could be the distraction. So right. if you have someone. I relate to that very well. I will watch a um, movie or whatever, and I will get distracted by something that they missed. And so it creates a problem then because you're no longer focused on the intended Mm -hmm. area you're now focused on something in the background so i do understand what you're saying you want the yeah. focus on the right 
area. And so you're kind of, you're, I don't know, if controlling is right, maybe directing. You're directing the eye on what needs to be focused upon. Is that correct? Understanding? Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to find a good example of something that's, here we go. Okay. So some people, we're talking generalities. We're not talking every person. But like sure. looking at this one, it's like, well, the finger's cut off. So okay. people will start thinking about, oh, so it's the fingers. So you're, you're spending time and attention thinking about that. Right. Um, but there's also a thing called dynamic tension, where when it gets close to an edge, when something important gets close to an edge, it creates this little bit of tension. Here's another one where it cut off. Ah, okay. But this one's not, well, that one actually has decent it's not too close. Uh, there wasn't a good example earlier of dynamic tension. Um, no, that's a decent border. When I look at photographers, I think about a lot about borders. So this, this dress is like not really totally cut off, but it's so close to the edge. It okay. creates what it's called dynamic tension. And that's okay. not good. It would actually be better if you cut off more of the dress. Ah, okay. And then for it to be that close to the edge. So if I were to crop it, I would go somewhere like, I would just not have it be about the full dress because I failed in my job of giving it a good border around it. So in any case, but then you also have to realize you take hundreds of pictures. So it's a, it's a comparative game, right? Sure. <laughs> and the next picture is fine with good borders and everything. So, right. Okay. I can see that. Yeah. So why pick the previous one? Right. Okay. So distractions are um, bright and in focus, but not part of your story. Uh, things that are not in the picture, but people are, are thinking about them. Things that are in the picture and people are thinking about them, but they're not part of the story. Um, dynamic tension and things that, that aren't as expected, right? And you right. start to think about them, but they're not what you want someone to think about. Okay. Now, um, this goes to just things, human nature. This leads to things about human nature. So let's go to, let's find some of the ones that I deleted or something like that. Um, which is a good example. You probably see like, oh, okay. So someone's eyes closed or looking weird. Okay, like, sure. why don't we like pictures of people with their eyes closed most of the time? Because it's not as we would expect. Right. And people will start thinking about, why are their eyes closed? What, is that the story? Well, if the story is their eyes closed, then that's great. Right. Also, think about hair. The hair is not as expected. Right. People are going to think about that. And if that's not the story, like, oh, I just woke up. This is my morning hair. <laughs> you know, if that's the story of the picture, like literally, if it was a funny picture of like crazy hair, then this right. would be like, you of just course. changed the whole context of how you look at the picture. Of course. Right. But the, the whole concept is aesthetics of the attraction and distractions stays perfectly intact. Now, like, yeah, that's cool. This could be part of the story and maybe I shouldn't delete this picture because it could work if the story flipped, mm -hmm. you know? but she doesn't want this picture. She doesn't want this picture shown. I'm sure. Yeah. But maybe I should still keep it around for if it was like, if I ever needed some crazy hair picture or something. <laughs> sure. Um, I like the picture in the, le there we go. Yes. Like the way her dress is. Wow. So there's a bunch of like these. So we have to yep. find like a good one. Like here's a good framing and the way the dress looks. And, right. Um, and you have to think about like attractions, distractions. And then you look at it like, well, you know, we look at a picture, not how it is right now, but how it could be. And you okay. recognize like, even with just seconds time, because Jarvis not like God, he won't spend an eternity to help us become better. He's going to spend five, 10 seconds. That's about it. And okay. I'm going to do one big brush here on the face and on the dress and it directs people's attention to here. Okay. So that this area, but this picture so that they is know unedited. where to look. 
Yeah. This is okay. Yeah, yeah. Unreal. Okay. Because <laughs> it looks great to me. <laughs> yeah. You need to, yeah. So we need to be more. And I am worried that you're not going to be very, um, what is it? Like, ability for you to go like between one and the other. Like, okay. maybe you do have that ability of like, well, between one or the other, like this one's better or whatever, you know? Sure. Um, we'll see how that goes. I'll have to let you know. Okay. Because look, there's like 20 that are good. Right. We have to figure out which ones are better than the others. And my system of going, of rating, actually, I think will help you. Okay. But let's go back to the subject of attraction, distractions. So things that aren't as they should, you know, and even it gets down to the part of um, someone with really good skin. Uh -huh. Their pictures are going to be better in general than someone with really terrible skin. Right. Because of that general societal opinion of sure. what is distracting to someone. Right. What they're thinking about. If they're thinking a lot about the skin, oh, okay, well, look at that. Then you're not, then that story is harder to tell unless the story is about like bad skin for a dermatology lab or whatever, you know? Right. Or, um, I don't know, just all sorts of things. Sure. It's just general aesthetics but people like we're talking general like people can obviously have different likes or dislikes right right um anyways so but the i mean the eyes closed is an obvious one right, right. it's like we don't like lots of cat pictures by the way i love the cats good job that's so this is blurry. This is blurry. I haven't gone through this one. And you just have to suck it up. And if you find <laughs> a blurry picture, you have to hit the X button. And okay. It puts a little flag, on it, a little black flag on it. It's a, All right. It's a reject flag. And then when it comes back to me and I have access to my hard drive, because you won't have the hard drive connected, I will just delete every black flagged picture just gone forever and we're going to be okay with it because i took fifteen thousand pictures okay it's not going to hurt your feelings is what you're saying yeah no <laughs> okay. <but> like <laughs> i am excited when there's a lot of black like i take all right good. out of focus pictures a lot like that's an obvious one but there's right but that's going to happen there's I levels mean, I assume I yeah. assume as you take a picture, you're taking multiples quickly so that you catch the moment. And is that right? Or am I yeah. wrong on that? Yeah, yeah. So then, yeah, okay. So then there should be several that would be out of focus to find that perfect one. And besides, are you going to have like that chicken? Are you going to have five chickens? I mean, no, right? So that I don't think will be a problem. I, you know. Yeah, yeah. In a picture like this, you would suspect they're in different planes of fields with a low aperture, perhaps that one of them is going to be in focus and one of them won't be out of focus. But in this okay. case, neither of them are in focus and it's this right. It's this uh, cloth that's in focus. So I that's, a, sure. that's an auto reject. And in here you would think that like something needs to grab you that's in focus, but it seems right. like just everything's kind of like in a level of out of focus. So it doesn't work. Okay, good. And this yep. is out of focus and it's hard for you right now because probably don't see it very large. But this is literally the speed that I go through them. And I think that you need to get to the point of going through to find pictures that are out of focus. When I okay. would train people, I would say, literally tunnel vision yourself. And go through every picture just to see what's in focus and out of focus. And don't even emotionally connect at all with the picture. Okay. Period. Okay. And just think what's in focus. And then literally this... Man, if I, like, this could advance someone's photography so fast. Just a tunnel vision into focus and out of focus. And when you have something that's, like, somewhat out of focus, then you think, then you start to think a little bit emotionally, is this a good picture? Like, 
is it like a cool moment or are they going to like this or are there other things like if they're blinking okay then then it means like it's an obvious bet you know like right there are levels of obviously of how in focus or out of focus it is and when you get to that then you're like okay Okay, can we talk about that? those pictures where you took several of them? Now, these are better, but back at the first, um, they were incredibly bright so that the whole thing is bright. Now, you would be able to fix that, though, right? If yeah, I yeah. found a mm-hmm. picture. Okay. All this right. is fine. Okay, this great. Isn't too bright. Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay. <laughs> so, like, if you, can, if you can get through it, then you'll also establish a rhythm for like being able in, to go quickly through something. And um, start paying attention. Now, if this is the only picture at the loom of this lady and it's somewhat out of focus, don't reject it, you know? Okay. But then you go back through and you're like, oh, there's more pictures of her and some of them are more in focus. So I'm going to go back and reject this one but it's the only one of her in the picture. So, right. So we're going to keep it now. um, There's two of these and I would have kept this one, which is the only one of like just the loom, but I went to this one and it's way more in focus. So reject that first one. And um, this is all, so it's, out of focus so and you can see here that it's um it's put an x next to them but it's also kind of grayed them out let me give you an example of this is the last day in the country and i edited i did these ones yesterday okay Okay. last night so out of 1400 from that day it's not going to do it for me is it come on lightroom this is ridiculous. Okay. I entered sixteen that and but it was obviously it was it was like photographing chimpanzees in the wild and all that stuff. So it was there's so many tree hard to get it in focus. And I was fo- photographing birds and the birds were moving and it was just hard stuff. Sure. Anyways, so I selected a bunch of them to be out of but we projected them. Now, one question. That's the most effective method. And so when you go through them. What's the most effective method? I didn't hear it. Because ask yourself it was, it one out. question. What's the most effective? Look at a picture and ask one question in mind. So I'm telling okay. you that you need to start with that one question being, is this in focus or not? Should I reject this or not for being out of focus? Okay. okay. There are still a few days that I have not done it on, but most of them are done. But go and find them and then go through them and do that. And then you ask yourself one question and you have one finger next to the next button, like the right arrow button and one finger next to X and that's all you're doing. Well, and one finger next to back because you want to go at a speed where you're just like next, 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 next. It's a rhythm, right? And sometimes you process it a little bit past your rhythm. So you have to go back. Okay. You're willing to go back and forth. Right. And then also to compare because you're like, okay, well that one's, well, he's in focus. So I made a split second decision to reject it. Then I went to the next one. And then I process it a little bit later. I'm like, yeah, but he's in focus. So it's still right. Fine. Now this one's a reject. She's out of focus. She's in focus. Also, you start to realize, like, I have a lot of pictures of some of these people. So it right. doesn't really matter too much. Um, you know, you can be more selective about some okay. of this stuff. And you're like, oh, he has a lot of pictures of this person or this building. So you become start to become more 
Um, so, and then if it's really, really bad on the like distractive side of it, like some of these things, and you're like, oh, and I have a lot of this picture, you can get rid of some of the bad eye blinking shots, you know? Yeah. But it's typically this selection is for just finding the bad out of focus pictures, right? So I found another one and another one. And you start to recognize when it happens more, like when it's darker outside or inside or whatever. And um, when you come back with 15,000 pictures and a lot of one person, you can start adding in more things that you're willing to reject. Now, this is too bright. Okay. This is fine. So when the whites start to impact um, the main subject that much, it's a big deal. But if the okay. whites are in the sky, maybe not, because guess what you can do? You can turn it into a black and white, you know, and then it doesn't matter okay. if the sky is right. Right. Anyways, if there's, if you can kind of look down here as well, I don't know if my screen's working. Uh, it's a little slow. Okay. You can look down here, you look at this picture and you're like, and you can make a quick judgment. Like, look, I've got 10 more pictures of this cat coming up, you know? Mm -hmm. And actually it wasn't in, out of focus really. Uh, kind of is. It's a very slight out of focus. It's not enough to normally reject it. But when you look at, I've got 10 more pictures of this cat, you can just reject it. You know what I mean? Sure. Right. If you were to look at it as close as me, and sometimes you can like zoom in to like give yourself a better idea. Mm -hmm. Or you can use your second screen to zoom in, right? By hitting mm -hmm. the second screen thing right here. Okay, I see it. Yeah. It will make your computer go slower. Okay. Which isn't great because that cuts down in efficiency. Okay. Anyways, but um, I'm still saying that going through one by one, deleting blurry picture. Now, this was interesting. Anyways. Um, So it's an attempt of getting her through the streetcar. Oh. So every one of these that didn't work, and I just went click, 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 click. Sure. Should probably be deleted. Okay. And one made it, and then delete, 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 delete. One kind of made it, we'll keep it. Kind of made it, and kind of made it. And oh, this one really made it. Mm hmm. And um, this one kind of did. This one didn't, 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 did, didn't, didn't. This is fun, actually. But get rid of all these ones that didn't work. Now, you're also going to find um, pictures that are in a series, like a panorama, OK? Okay. It's very important that you do not delete any of them. Okay. That panorama. Sure. You think that you'll be pretty good at like, oh, look, this looks like it's in a series. Just yes. when you're at a scenic thing, just expect that I take a lot of panoramas. Yeah. A lot, most of the scenics won't be out of focus either because the scene isn't moving and stuff. Well, this is a scenic and it's out of focus. You can delete it and then like, oh, crap, that was part of a series and then go back and undelete them. Right. Okay. Anyways, I took 168 pictures that day, not many, and 74 of them are going to be deleted. <laughs> it's kind of fun. We just did a whole entire day while we were talking. Okay. Wow. This is a good example of a day to go through. Okay. So now you can do, uh, you could delete all the um the rejected ones, but you can't because you don't have access to the. Oh, good. So even when I flag it, I'm not deleting it. So you can go back later and double check my work. Is yeah. what you're saying? So good. now I'll filter it by <laughs> flagged and unflagged. So, okay. so like picked and non-picked. So everything, all, right. all two of these except for the rejected. Okay. So now okay. we're just looking at 94 out of the 168. Okay. You can okay. rewatch this. So now what we're going to do is ask yourself one question. Our previous one question was, should I reject this? Right. 
Now our one question is what? Is it focused or not focused? No, that was our already our question. Okay. So then what's the now, next question? What's the next question? The oh. question is is this decent? Oh, okay. This is where you get to be like, I love everything, okay? Yeah. <laughs> like this is good, this is good, this is good. Okay. But these are similar, so by the third one you're like, never mind. I'm over it, yeah, sure. <laughs> See, I'm putting a one on almost all these things. They're all decent. Okay. So this is where you're excited. And this is where you're like, oh, 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 look, I think I found a series. Okay. I'm sure. So then you go through the whole entire series. Oh, that's not part of the series. And then you control click. See I'm down down here. So now all four of these are are highlighted. Okay. So yes. Panel. Boom, 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 boom. You hit control click and that Yeah, or shift click or control click. And now I hit control G and okay. they're all in a group together now. Oh, okay, great. Um, and maybe what I should do before. You... Yeah. And so what I think you should do is highlight them all um, green. So put uh, eight is the quick one for it. So okay. highlight them all green and put them in a group. Because what I'm worried about is that the group won't show up for me when it comes back to me. Okay. But the color will. All so right. then I'll be able to identify the panos and group them for myself quicker. Okay. Anyways, so we're going back through, and um, so you don't have to one star or any. You could, if the individual elements with inside of a pano are really cool, you could do that, but it doesn't really matter, right? Right. And I take panos a lot. So we're going back to one starring these things. And um, now the point of doing this is um, the ability to, to screw it up is way lower by doing this system. You're picking most things, right? Mm -hmm. But you're hoping, like, making a mistake isn't a big deal because it's easy to like, oh, this is decent. You're not going to mistake not select the best picture in the whole entire album, right? Right. Because the best picture is obviously going to end up chosen at least at number one, right? Sure. I see what you're saying. Um, and you don't have to make the decision. Now, if the picture is like right next to each other, like there's no difference between this one and this one, you don't mm -hmm. have to select both of them. Okay. Right? This one's slightly different. You can give them both a one. They're both decent. That's the question okay. you're asking yourself. Um, and you don't have to stress about something because it's a quick, quick selection, right? Right. And also, you already, you like, you did that job of rejecting, right? Right. Now, on that case, default on less aggressive because you're still going to see them all again, right? If you didn't select it to be rejected, you're going to see them again. So if you're like, well, I'm not sure how in focus that is, you can just go to the next picture because you're right. going to see them again. Right. You didn't reject them. And then right. you could then reject them again. Right. After like, oh, rejection. okay. Yeah. Like I had more time to think about it. It's right. Time to reject it. And that's why the going through it multiple times system is look now it's black and white is mm -hmm. a good system because it uh, is you have a second chance on a lot of things. right makes sense yep um and now this one made it through for some reason it it's should too be bright, rejected right? yeah okay. so it's all right that i made a mistake in that first time right and well, you were a good system i like it <laughs> second chances i'm for second chances <laughs> Okay, so now we went through all of them real quick. Okay. And now we can hit the filter button to number ones. So now there's 65. Okay. okay. Most mm -hmm. of them made it through to the second round. Um, and you don't um, need to. Okay, well, so now what's the question? Now, all of these 
are one stars. They've all, they're right. all winners. Okay. So first all question winners. was, right. First question was, is this focused or not focused? Second question was, is it decent? Now we're at a third question. Now the third question is, um, which one stands out, you know, like which one's okay. good. Right. Like, and I don't know what, you know, like, it's like, which ones could be at all usable by Jarvi at some future point? Sure. Okay, that one. And this is where you start to get a little more selective, right? Right. If things are similar, like, can this ever be used by me? Probably. You know, like, and this no. is maybe still where you're like, I like a lot of these, right? Because <laughs> my question that. is like not, like <laughs> my question isn't good enough yet for that, what you're talking right. about. Well, that's fine. You can keep them all twos. What ends up happening is um, it just generally ends up being 50% without even trying okay. most and I've taught so many people and it's always when they do it, it just tends to be 50% and sometimes a little bit more than others. And sometimes the next round, if, if it ends up being like 60, 70% in this round, the next round will be even more aggressive. It tends to be. And when you're rating these, you're not rating the individual picture or are you rating it against your whole day, for example, or the whole collection? It tends to be the whole collection. Okay. Like um, the day, or in this case, like grab like the whole entire week and start rating them all against each other, you know? Right. Um, it's, it's different. That's why rating systems and you're like, oh, I just picked your number five. I'm like, well, that was a five compared to the rest of the other ones inside of that. And so. Right. That, from that day. Anyways, um, when you have this, you have left and right with one hand and one and two with the other hand. So that you're like, I'm going to rate this two if I like it, right? Uh-huh. But then you're like, oh, wait, never mind. I'm going to go back and give that a one. You know, so okay. take it back down to a one. So in this point, you're doing this job of like, there's two similar pictures, pick mm -hmm. one with a better border above the cat. Okay. Or something to that effect that just, you may be wrong, like, but at least you're not, if you still chose a good picture, like one of them still made it to the next round. Sure. You should have a, like one of these days, you should have a phone call with my sister and ask yeah. her about doing this because she did it during my whole entire trip across country, my Faith uh -huh. America trip. She's the one that did all of the rating. Oh, really? Okay. On 300,000 pictures. Oh, my. Yeah. So you can have her tell you some tips on it and stuff. Okay. And what I tend to look for if she even remembers. It's been so many <laughs> years. Anyways, we went from 65 down to 42. So it wasn't perfectly cut in half. half. But, but my question wasn't super aggressive either. So now we need to think like what pictures are what would be the next question? I, I've been having trouble with these questions sometimes recently as well. Sometimes I just end now and say, let me just pick what pictures I want for Sure. To well, maybe that to is smug key, mugs. right? It's what stands out, and then the end is what do you want, and that becomes the top ones because mm -hmm. you've already picked what stood out. So now it just is what are you going to actually use? So maybe I say, what is what do I want? Mm -hmm. Because you're going to have several other questions and you're not going to do it via ratings. You're going to do it via collections, right? Right. Okay. You're going to say what picture belongs in this collection about uh, cats. 
you know, right. or about top of the Sophia Blue or whatever, right? Right. And that's your one collect your one question. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you're going to do that with the B, and you're going to go next, next, next B, 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 yeah. or B. look at yeah. it in grid mode and do it even faster. But in this case, I'm like, you know, if you can get to the level two, maybe the three is like a general, like, Scott, these are your very, like your highest quality images. Mm -hmm. Like that's an awesome image. Yeah, it is. This is like, that's fine. It's fine as a two though, not as a three. Right. Like what are the pictures that are like going to make other photographers impressed? Okay. Right. Maybe that's your question. Okay. Do that. That's a okay. really good one. What picture is going to make other photographers impressed? And you may have to have a, there may be so many pictures in a collection. We only got 168 in this one. That you may have to have two and three kind of be the same thing. And then by four, you can do that. Like, this is what's, these are the pictures that will make photographers impressed. Right. Okay. Because there's just okay. so many of them. But right. we're already down to so few that at level three, we're now to like what's going to make the photographers impressed. That one, that one, that one, maybe that one. Your favorite building. <laughs> yes. Um, and between the two, it's like, oh, get the one with all the chandeliers, I guess. Yeah, I love the chandeliers. Oh, that one, the close-up is cool, too. Yeah, I mean, if you added it, that would be fine. I didn't, but it's just like, it's it's fine that this, is, you know, like, if it gets added or it's like borderline, it's fine. What we're hoping that happens is the best pictures. Right. For right. sure make it in there. Right. And the worst pictures for sure don't make it in there. Right. And there you go. Anyways, so now we have like, you know, 15, my 15 best pictures from the day. That, that doesn't mean, so <laughs> what's that? I said that wasn't so painful. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's just doing this a hundred times. But also, it's the fact that you're going to make little sub collections like, oh, that could be a fun. Like, I just want the best pictures of this Hagia Sophia. And I went back to it, by the way. So, um, well, this is the return visit to it. Okay. So you could, like, create a collection and add pictures and another collection, add pictures. But sure. anytime you could create a collection and do that, I'm just telling you, you're acknowledging that you want to do that one. Okay. All, right. oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. You can create a lot of collections and then you can highlight the collections if you know for sure you want to do that one or you're just like contemplating it. Okay. Okay. And the way to do that is right click on it. Okay. And add a color label to it. Okay. Okay. So then make like red be like hey scott for sure do edit all of these because i'm for sure doing this one okay so put no yeah so make as many collections as you want good because that's what's going to happen is i'm going to have a thought and then later see m more of a different one and mm -hmm. realize wait a minute i, I don't want to do that now as as much as i thought i did so or mm -hmm. it's on the back burner to something else okay Um, I got to go decently soon. We still got another 10, 15 minutes. I kind of want to go back to that subject of attractions and distractions. Okay. Okay. We've talked a lot about distractions, um, a lot about it. Um, attractions tends to be divided into three things, things that are always in the picture, things that are sometimes in the picture. And then the, um, thoughts about the picture okay so things okay. that are always in pictures every picture has color every picture has texture 
Every picture has light and darkness. Every picture has an angle of view, like from low or from high or from side or from side, right? Yeah. Um, it's been a little while since I've done this. So I think I covered most of them, right? So the subject then becomes, so <clears throat> an attraction is when you make one of those things stand out. Okay. That they are unique, bold, um, and appealing, right? Okay. So when you have a bright blue appealing color, it's bold. That makes okay. this picture more attractive. Okay. You do happen to have a distraction in here that it's an uneven horizon, but that's quick. It's hard for the eye to spot. I could make you go through an entire catalog of just looking for an uneven horizons and asking yourself which one is uneven and putting it into collection and we can straighten them. Right. I could show you how to straighten them, but it's not really that important because I'll edit them real fast. It doesn't really make or break a picture. It just means, you know, a two second edit. So, right. So okay. anyways, um, so bright colors, bright, beautiful okay. colors, right? Like why do people like rainbows? Now there's an emotional side. There's a, there's that third side of it, but it's sure. also because there's bright colors. We sure. like rainbows because of the bright colors in general. So we like rainbows in pictures, same reason. We like sunsets right. for the same reasons because they're bright, uncommon, colors or to see in nature we don't right. see those colors that often in the sky you know yeah um anyways so then you go to the next one um so still lots of nice colors and all that sort of stuff so we have textures and the textures of the water or the textures of the building mm -hmm. when they're when they there's always texture when there's bright or like strong, unique texture, it can add to it. Okay. Now, just because it isn't strong and unique doesn't mean it's bad. It just doesn't add an element of attraction. But there's probably other elements in there. You know what I mean? Right. Because there could be good light and there could be good or color or texture, you know? There's the rainbow speaking of it, you know? Now, a question, can you make that rainbow stand out more then? Is that what you're editing? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, okay. not much. Other photographers okay. could, but I can't. Okay. Because I use Photoshop and I don't. Right, exactly, because of your techniques. So, um, but, uh, you know, I try to make it stand out. I, I think actually with the new Lightroom things, I can do a lot more okay. than I used to. I'm just, yeah, I was curious. And I'm willing to. It's just like, how much time do I spend on it and stuff? Right. So. Um, okay, so those are the things. Things that can sometimes be in a picture. Mm -hmm. And when they are unique or bold, they will add an element of attraction. And those things okay. are symmetry, um, lines and patterns. Okay. So repeating lines or lines that move into the corners or um, even nice S-curve lines um, and patterns. There's a good example of patterns and lines. Often mm -hmm. lines are the patterns, right? Mm -hmm. Lines that move towards a, that move towards a subject, that lead towards the subject. They're called leading lines. Um, those are things that are, have to be in every picture, but when they are, they can add elements of attraction. Um, so lines, patterns, symmetry. There's a few other things I keep forgetting. But then the third is the thing that you're going to find the most interesting um, is that there is appeal. Like uh -huh. if you like cats, you are right. more attracted to this picture sure. because you like cats. You're willing to spend more time and attention on this picture. Thus a more attractive picture. That right. is the essence of attraction. 
subject matter <laughs> is important. If you like Istanbul a lot, then you mm -hmm. are going to like this picture more than someone else. Right. If you have a picture of a place that more people like, it is going to be a more attractive picture. If it's Hawaii, more people will like that picture. Okay. Simply going to Hawaii will make your pictures more attractive because more people like Hawaii. Hmm. It's a very simple concept, but you're putting into that language the full concept of the language. Okay. And now someone that doesn't like cats, um, like where I'm staying, she's like, hates cats. It's like, she's not going to like this picture. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's just how it is. It's one that likes cats. It's going to like this picture more. But right. so a photographer's job is sometimes just finding the right things to take a picture of. And it's easy if you're like a wedding photographer or whatever. It's like, well, you're taking a picture of the person that people like and people want to go take, you know, to go see, right. you know. Right, makes sense. So it made your job a little easier. <laughs> yeah. Taking pictures of babies, you know, like, okay, people are going to like your pictures more. Mm -hmm. Taking pictures of fast, you know, like exotic cars or beautiful people, you know? Right. Like people are going to follow your Instagram a little bit more, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> um, okay. So there's the connection to the subject. Um in general and specifically, like it's my child, you're going to, you know, I'm going to like that picture more. Sure. Um, but we're talking generalities when we're talking about, you know, like social media, you know, like taking pictures of things people are going to like in more general. Um, but there's also the aspect of uniqueness. If something is unique, they're willing to spend more time and attention on that picture. Okay. Okay. I don't mm -hmm. know if I have necessarily a unique thing going on here, right? Not in any of these. Mm. Uh, maybe, you know, like the, the chimpanzees, right? If I got one picking its nose, that is a unique moment. <laughs> sure. It, it, and then you also think of things that stir emotions. Oh, I loved these pictures. So whatever stirs emotions gets people to spend more time and attention. Okay. And thus an attraction. Sure. So it's all encapsulated in the concept of attraction and distraction. And the three things, things that are always in there, things that are, you know, elements, photographic elements that are always in there, photographic elements that are sometimes in there, and then the, the emotional connection. Okay. Uniqueness uh, um, of the the thing mm -hmm. appeal to the user or user base. Mm -hmm. um, the general uniqueness, simply taking pictures of a rare animal will make your picture more attractive. Okay. You could have a picture of a bird that is just so much more beautiful than this other picture, but the other picture is a rare bird. Right. The rare bird wins. Sure. If the person know that knows that it's rare, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. that's the caveat. <laughs> um, okay. So in this one, you've got unique colors and patterns and textures and stuff like that, right? Right. So a lot going for it, yeah. and symmetry, and I don't know, so much. A lot going for it. Um, all right, so that's that's part of it. What I'm going to end up doing is sending you the whole collection. But the moment I send it to you, then I can't work on it anymore, right? <gasps> okay. But you could say, "Hey, look," I could say, "Hey, look," I really need to work on day uh, like the 9th of December. And you're like, "Well, I have it." Okay, so then don't work on it on your side. I see. And okay. I'll, and I'll work on it on my side. Something to that effect, right? 
Sure. Okay. Well, that's fine because I got a few days to work on PD stuff, and this is going to be like a like a uh, a blitz, I should say, for you to work on. Do we have any other super important things to work on? I guess we could talk about it while it's not being recorded. But I still think this was um, helpful enough to share with other people. Agreed. So um, to recap, do a delete exercise on some of the days that I haven't done a, like a delete reject exercise so that you can train your eyes to get really good at finding focus versus out of focus mm -hmm. and realizing sometimes it's obvious and sometimes it's harder. And sometimes you're going to have to think about the picture and how many versions of that picture as well, you know? Sure. And then maybe sometimes you're just like, eh, skip it. And then maybe on when you go see it again, you're like, oh, I, that, yeah, that was a little more obvious than I expected. And then you can delete it at that point. Okay. Well, hit the X button. I'll delete later. Right. Um, and we'll go through it, you know, as you go through a bunch of them and we could go, oh, yeah, yeah, that was, that was correct. That wasn't, you know. And the way to do that is to look at them when you're in one. So if we go back to our, this, here's the way to double check. When you're in the grid mode and you hit one, mm -hmm. you can hit this little thing next to it and say is equal to. So now you see only the ones that ended up in one. Okay. Oh, okay. And so then you say, do you like one of these is not like the other. You play that game. Sure. And you're like, holy crap, this is so much better than the others. What was I thinking leaving this at one? Right. This really should be two because it stands out so much more. So these stand out. And then you go to number two and you're like, why did this one end up at number two, you know, or this one? Right. That doesn't seem like it stands up compared to the other ones. Like these other ones are so much better. And then you're like, oh, I get it. I get this is why this one ended up at level two. But these ones are so much better pictures than most of the others. Whatever. We'll leave it at level two. You can also do this with zero, right? Like which ones? It's like, I get it. You know, like some of these didn't deserve, but this one seems pretty good. You know, like that sort of thing, right? Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Like this one seems like it should deserve. So you can kind of go through and correct yourself, right? Okay, sure. When I go through, if I were to go through these pictures again, they'd be different. Like I would pick different zeros and ones and ones and twos. Now, the point is to not have it. It's not going to be exact every single time. The point is that you don't miss label the best ones and the worst ones, you know? Okay. All right. Like your ones, like the ones that are horrible don't end up as five stars. And the ones <laughs> yeah. that should have been five stars don't end up being left in the dust at zero stars. You know? Right. Okay. And in general, you end up with some good ones, but yeah. Sure. So that's, that's the, that's the, and now you understand how, you know, the language of aesthetics, I could go off and give a lot more examples about them, you know, like even just having a cat that has patterns and lines makes the cat more attractive. Right. And the bright, unique colors that like yellow eyes. If you found a cat with like beautiful blue eyes, it makes the picture more attractive, right? because it's right. something unique or they're not used to, or they, I don't know, some emotion, whatever. There's all sorts of things. So there you go. And we can talk about different collections to make and stuff. And uh, luckily I did all the, all the selecting for um, all of the humanitarian, hope humanitarian. Okay. But you can still go through and find collections that you would like to do. But this is what I, you know, I made the decision. This is my yes, no. I said, what do I want to share with the people that I was on the trip with? Right. That was my yes, no. And I didn't give it a three star. I gave it a red, which is the, the number six. Okay. Or I put it into this collection right here, which was at one point a B, you know, for a quick collection or target collection. 
So. How do I remove the collection from being a target collection? Do you I just, just have pick... to make a, something new uh, the collection? Oh, as a new target. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I will. Um, I will work on. Um, well, you know what we're going to do right now. What? We're going to select every picture in here. We're going to just filter by bad pictures. The ones that I've set to reject. Okay. There are 1600 pictures. We're going to delete them from the face of this earth. Eek. We're not just going to remove them from Lightroom. We're going to delete them off your, my disk. Your disk. Sure. We are saving how many gigabytes? 150, 60 gigabytes of data. This means we could wow. add 60 more gigabytes, 1,600 more pictures from yeah. some other photo shoots. And the problem is you don't know which ones I've done now. <laughs> Sorry. If you start going through a collection now or through a day, a folder, okay, and you don't find any rejectable stuff or not many, it means I probably already did it. Sorry. Okay. Are I we should, still recording uh, yeah. for your yeah. video? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I should just stop this. I'm going to stop it. So now you have that help. Anyways, so don't expect it on the first few. But anyways, um, I deleted quite a few. Um, don't do video folder things as well. Okay. Uh, so just focus on the ones that aren't video. And um, Are we, you stopped recording the video. No, I'm now? still going. I'm still going. Oh, okay. My, um, I'm sorry. You just tell me when, and then I'll ask. Got something so it's, important to tell me, don't you? No, I don't. No, I just it's like not important for the video, so okay. <laughs> that's why. Um, okay, so yeah, let's. Are you up for tackling this pretty quick or not? Sure. Oh yeah. And um, you could do like collections of like, hey, I think the people you traveled with are really going to like these pictures. Okay. That could be another one. And they don't have to be a post, you know what I mean? Sure. But there is the one where the one day I visited the refugee camps in Africa and the mm -hmm. one day I visited them in Lebanon. And you, you know, the, like the day in the life, you know, like the, yeah, I can, that whole thing is what hope humanitarian will want anyways. So right. doing that post for me is what they'll want for them. Sure. And you could do each individual that I traveled with afterwards, which was just Jason and Sarah, like, here's the best of Jason. Here's the best of Sarah. Okay. That way we don't have to pick too many crazy, too many of them. Because they don't need 50 of themselves. Here, I have like 10, 20 of themselves. Okay. Um, so, yeah. There's obviously more, and we can talk about it in a future thing. And now I will stop the recording here in a moment. And three, two, one, 